Okay, um, here I'm going to show you the third way of adding uh, compounds into the component table. I've, uh, in the previous video, I've already showed you how, you know the two ways uh, to add compounds into the component table. You know, both are manual ways. Uh, let me show you a third way, which is uh, slightly more automated. So let me delete this compounds that I've created already. So delete it. Go away. Okay. Okay. Um, Actually, somehow I don't like to see this uh, peak window bar. So let me um, let me uncheck this, and it goes away. Okay, good. Okay. So the third way is uh, to let Chromelian automatically do the library search on all the peaks that has integrated. So let me unzoom on the chromatogram. So it has detected, you know, so many peaks, right? So uh, uh, let us. Uh, We'll let uh, Chromelian do an automated, li automated library search on all of these. Uh, you know, by the way, let me uh, let me show you another thing. So, uh, let me go to uh, the chromatogram pane. Let me go to the layout. Okay, and uh, in the speak labels, uh, you know, uh, bar, uh, you know, it uh, only the identified compounds, you know, will show the label, right? So let me click on this one, unidentified and let's see what happens okay it's doing something okay did you see what it did so it automatically labeled the unidentified compounds with the library match so it automatically automatically did the library search for you so let me just zoom in because you know it's kind of busy in this area um, so you know it was automatically searched uh, <clears throat> the NIST library and shown up uh, the first hit. So like in the previous video, like I said, like this compound is actually um, naphthalene, you know, even though the first hit is azulene. So, uh, uh, and this one is ace naphthalene. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, you know, like you can change, uh, you know, which library hit uh, it takes uh, let me show you that too since we are over here so let me right click and go to properties and the property we are looking is peak label okay and uh, what we're looking for is unidentified peaks right so you can see the formula over here so you know this is the way it labels the peaks okay so so it, ra it labels the RT you know the formula for RT is peak dot retention time and, you know this is the format and the library match so lib match peak dot hit mass spec one dot name so that's you know that's the formula that's uh, um, you don't have to worry about this but I want to show you just in case you know you're interested so this is number one so now if I do number two it should the label should show you the second hit okay so let me do uh, let's see if this works right so let me close this and there you go so it you know labels the second hit uh, which in case uh, which in our case it is uh, you know at least for these two come uh, these two peaks um but you know not for this peak so anyway let me uh, let me uh, uh, switch it back to the first hit you know because that's the default and usually that works pretty well okay Okay, so how do we aut uh, get an get an automated uh, way of filling the peaks of interest into this component table, right? So what you do is, uh, you know, uh, in your processing method, go over here and click import. Okay, and uh, another way to get to that same import is, you know, you uh, be on this header, you know this header and right click and import compound data okay so as soon as you do that you know it library searches all the peaks that is it, that it has integrated so it you know found 23 com compounds right let me uh, just uh, change the column width so it's not so you can see everything okay and Okay, so um, 
so obviously uh, you know like some of these compounds are not of my interest say 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 i want to say i just want uh, you know these three compounds right um if i move this over here okay say i just want uh, you know these three peaks that have are of my interest and that's all i want to calibrate for and you know do quantitative data on so um <clears throat> so what you would do is you know over here you don't see the retention time so what you what you what you need to do is expand on this right so you know this is obviously an early eluter at three seconds, uh, three minutes, uh, which is not of my interest. So uh, you know you can individually go over here. So this is this is the naphthalene peak, right? You click on this, okay, and uh, this is the second one by phenylene. Click on it. Oops. And uh, ace naphthene. Okay, and and the fourth one is fluorine. So, so we oh yeah, are fluorine. Okay, say I want on four. So you, so if you know what you're looking for, uh, you know you don't have to expand this. But you know, I I just wanted to show you. So if you, so I just wanted to show you. If you expand this, what it shows is the you know the mass on which it will. This is the quant ion, and you know this is the retention time. You know this is the window. And so, if you if I if I click on this once more on this plus sign, it will show the two confirming ions, one twenty seven, one one zero two. Okay, and uh, you you select the compounds that are uh, that you want in your component table, and click on import. So as soon as you do that, you know it will import um, it will import the compounds. Okay, and and one good thing about this is it will automatically import, you know, the uh, quant ions and the confirming ions. So in the previous method of manually adding in compounds, you'll have to you know manually add in the quant ions and the confirming ions. So you know you have, you have to look at the spectra and you know look at the li NIST library spectra also and make sure you have the right uh, ions. So so it, so this is another way. Of um, uh, <clears throat> of adding com uh, compounds to the component table. Okay, I think I'll stop over here.